My first guest tonight is a two-time Academy Award-nominated actor, as well as a successful producer and entrepreneur. He has a passion project he's been working on for years, and it may be his most personal film yet. It's called Father Stew, and it tells the amazing true story of a self-destructive boxer turned priest. I sat down with him recently in Los Angeles to talk about how Father Stew's story tracks with his own life and struggles and the Catholic faith that saved him. Here's my exclusive interview with Mark Wahlberg. I want to start with where you first heard about Father Stu. I'd never heard of this man. I cover this stuff for a living. Mm -hmm. I literally never heard of Father Stuart Long. How did you encounter this story? Okay, I'm at an Italian restaurant in Beverly Hills with two priests, um, and we're just trying, to, me and one of the priests are just trying to enjoy our meal and, uh, and a glass of wine, and the other priest is adamant about pitching me this movie idea. And then uh, my wife had heard the pitch and said, oh my God, you gotta do this. And then he told me the pitch again. I said, why do you keep pitching me this movie? You know nothing about movies in Hollywood. And, uh, and, and, uh, and then something just caught my attention about the story. What was it? What was the one thing that you went, I have to do this? This is in what, 2016? Yeah, maybe, yeah, 2016, 2015. It's been about six years uh -huh. in, in, in the making. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I just said start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then when I started to hear the story, you know, it's like everything happens for a reason. So I've always been kind of thinking about how do I continue to pay forward all the blessings that have been bestowed upon me. I know God didn't put me in this position to kind of forget about where I came from. I've been doing lots of stuff in my own community where I grew up and worked with inner city kids and at risk youth. But he doesn't give you the, the, the gifts and the talents until it's time to utilize in the right way and for him and not for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I've always been kind of saying, okay, what is my mission? What is my purpose? Mm -hmm. And planting this seed, letting it blossom, and then utilizing that to, 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 to continue to spread his word. You financed this movie yourself as well. This was not easy to make. It's not like the studios were yapping to get the Father Stew story. Uh, yes, I broke the, the cardinal rule. You never put your own <laughs> money into a film. Right. But um, I didn't even really go out to a lot of people. I didn't send it to any major studios. I had a couple of friends who I had made kind of small, independent uh, movies with or people that I made a couple of true stories with, and they didn't even really respond to it. Mm. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to do it on my own. Father Stu is this priest. He's kind of a wayfarer. He's trying to find his way. He's a, he's a roustabout guy. Um, at one point, he To put it mildly. What, well, to, to put, put it mildly. mildly. I'm trying to... It's a family yeah. audience, Mark. Uh, he says... He tells the rector when he's denied access to the seminary, he says the church need, what the church needs is somebody who will fight for God. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I love the church, but for me, it's not about the church as so much as is the guy who died to build it. Mm -hmm. and, and his message, um, everybody else are human beings working to serve God mm -hmm. the best they can. We're all weak. Uh, and, you know, I get that. But uh, it, he, he, was, he had found his calling, and he was, he was really ready to commit to, uh, to serving God in a very different way. There are parallels here, Mark, between your journey and Father Stu's journey, which is the first thing on second watching I went, wait a minute. I mean, he had a few brushes with the law. So did you in your youth. Was it about finding through suffering your purpose and your direction and, and with faith? Is that what? Yeah, always. But you know, it's one of those things where uh, did I think it was a great part for me to play? Yes, but it was more important to tell the story and get the story out there and encourage other people to find their own faith and their own purpose in life, mm -hmm. uh, and bring bring uh, lapsed Catholics back to church. Mm -hmm. uh, I just felt like it was it was a it was a story and a message that everybody needed to hear. Um, and so, yes, do I always try to find some sort of personal connection to a role? Absolutely, I need to identify with it some way. Mm -hmm. um, is this something that I identify with more than anything else? Absolutely. Is this mm -hmm. my mission to now continue to do Stu's work um, and, and take on that responsibility? Yes, I've spent 50 years working on Mark Wahlberg, whether it was the good part of Mark Wahlberg or the bad part of Mark Wahlberg, and now it's about you know doing more, hmm. giving back. Yeah. What is Stu's mission that you feel you're, you have to continue? Uh, you know, Stu was one of the most brutally honest. I, I actually remember now what the thing that stuck out to me. Oh, good. Uh, Father Ed was telling me 
a story about how, you know, Stu was already in the assisted living home. Um, there was a giant line of people waiting. He was a very prideful guy, so he wanted to continue to take care of himself, even, you know, as his, uh, his sickness um, worsened. And he was just trying to wash his face in the sink, and this woman barged in. And she basically cut the line, and she was a, a big contributor to the church, so she felt like she had the right to, to access mm -hmm. Stu at any time. I'll give you the mild version. I won't give you yeah. the, the hard rated R language that Stu used at the time. But he was there, he was just trying to wash his face, and she was complaining. Her car window had gotten broken, they stole her computer. Mm -hmm. And he looked at her and he said, good, you probably deserve that, and the guys probably need it more than you do. Now, give some more money to the church and get out of here. I got people that I need to talk to. Uh, and a again, I changed the wording a little yeah. bit for our family audience. But yeah. um, I was like, whoa. It was, uh, he was, he was a really honest, brutally honest guy. But, you know, he touched so many people. So many people could relate to him. Yeah. And he told the truth. And, you know. Um, and it's an amazing story of suffering, um, accidents, uh, hardships that he can't fathom or understand or make sense of, which I think everybody feels at some point or another. Well, yeah, but then he ultimately that. embraced those things, mm -hmm. and that's what, that's what, God, it gives me so much hope and so much understanding, because, you know, death is inevitable, you know, sickness, mm -hmm. all of those things are inevitable, we're going to face those, but how you, how you face those things, and how Stu was able to embrace those things, mm -hmm. and as his phys physicality started to deteriorate, his spirituality just soared. And people recognize that, and they recognize the truth in that. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like smoke and mirrors, like, mm -hmm. oh, no, this is a... Um, he was glad that this happened to him. It allowed him to get closer to God through his suffering. Yeah. And it gave him the ability to share that with other people in a very honest way that was very relatable. Life's going to give you a gut full of reasons to be angry. You only need one to be grateful. Oh, I think God saw something in you worth saving, but it's up to you to decide what you've got to offer. This is the place you told me you believed in me. I thought it makes sense being back here to do this. Your son is about to make a huge mistake. Well, I'm gonna be a priest. For Halloween. Mm. I'm praying for you, Bill. Don't you dare. You're violating my rights. There's a man going around Take a name. We've all been wrong, and we've all done some wrong. But he came to forgive us. Everybody won't be treated all the same. There is no easy way to deliver this news. You have a progressive muscle disorder. The muscles weaken until they cease to function. Is there anything it doesn't mess with? Yeah, erectile function. I'm trying to be a priest, pal. The wise men will bow down before the throne. Oh, no. I won't bow down. Why? It's late. And at his feet, they'll cast their golden crown. Man don't lose when he gets knocked down, but when he won't get up. You mentioned a moment ago the R-rated language that Father Stu used. You don't shy away from that in this movie, no, um, no. which I have to tell you, at first I thought, oh, wow. And then as you watch it, the language really gives it its authenticity. That's who these people are, and frankly, who your viewing audience is in many ways. Ways. Was that the thinking there? Because a lot of times they'll sanitize this for a family audience or a faith um, film. Yeah, you know, we had always talked about, you know, what the tone of the movie was. And uh, Father Ed had told me a wonderful story about how Father Stu and his dad and a couple of the friends went to go see The Fighter and how much they loved the movie, but also how much it affected them in a much more personal way because it really reminded them a lot about aspects of their own life. Mm. Um, and, you know, people, has, there is... People swear, you know, we wanted to be brutally honest. We want to make sure that we're, we're not, this movie is not exclusive to Catholics and devout mm -hmm. people. This is inclusive to everybody who needs people. You remember what God's mission was, right? He didn't come to save the righteous. That's right. So, um, and you know, many, many, many hardened men became great, great, uh, you know, people who did wonderful service to the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Well, and yeah. it's not cheap grace. That's what I thought when I watched yeah. it the first time. No, cheap grace is the complete opposite. Right. That's somebody who's asking for forgiveness without repenting, without without confessing. Mm -hmm. It's the complete opposite. But this is a hard path, Mark. This guy's yes. journey is very hard. But many people are having very difficult journeys right now, you know. And that's that's who we want to touch. That's who we want to inspire to to be able to overcome and to persevere. I did a lot of research before we met today. 
Um, during your teen years, you had a rough time in Boston. I mean, you were, you were on coke, you were getting in fights. What were you angry at? And how does that, it seems that ties in some ways to what Stu was looking for in this story. Well, if you kind of go back to what, what I was most hurt by or what bothered me the most, um, even though we didn't have much mm -hmm. at all, uh, we had each other. You know, the youngest of nine. Um, my dad was a truck driver. My mom put herself through nursing school. And my parents separated when I was 11. I was devastated. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I went bouncing back and forth between, you know, my mom's yeah. house and my dad's house. And my mom quickly got remarried. My dad never got married again. My dad was my hero. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was difficult. You know, at that time, I wasn't, I wasn't a, a leader. I was a follower. You know, and I was easily influenced by various people, and I looked up to the wrong people. And but there were positive influences in my in my life that were there that I just didn't recognize them as being the people that I should listen to. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the cool car, they didn't have people looking up to yeah. them, they didn't have the sneakers, they didn't have all the things that we didn't have that we finally realized, you know, or that we thought was important. Um, my father, Flavin, Jim Flavin, who has been right. such an influence in my faith and my life, who was the consultant on this movie. Um, Your parish priest yes, back home. Yes, he would come out in the morning. He was surprised that you know thirteen-year-old kids were hanging out on the on the corner at you know two o'clock in the morning drinking okay. beer. But he would instead of like chasing us off, he'd sit there and he'd have a beer and he'd have a conversation with us. Mm -hmm. And when all those guys that I looked up to that I wanted to be like, um, when I got in trouble, when I got incarcerated, they never came to visit me. Mm. And Father Flavin was there. Father Flavin was there when I went to court. He was there when I was incarcerated. He was there when I came home. And he was, he's still in my life to this day. And that was a real turning point in your life. That, that, if that was a wake-up If up that point. doesn't turn you, turn you around and wake you up, nothing will. Father Stu's story is really one of family, a shattered family, in pain and wounded over the death of a, an older boy. And the family breaks up and Stu then finds his way. But the miracle of Father Stu in many ways is that he brings his family back together and continues his mission. It, it's an incredible story. His, his crowning achievement, um, which you know, I think would have been too much emotionally for, mm -hmm. and we could have, we could have made a uh, you know, uh, 20 episode saga of <laughs> Stu's story. Yeah, but um, was that on his on a gurney, he was in the church as his mom and his dad were being baptized. Mm -hmm. And they were both obviously very angry at God. They had lost their youngest son very early. Uh, he basically went to bed, took a nap, and never woke up. Mm. And that really devastated their family. It obviously, you know, it, it rocked their, their foundation. And mm. the faith was, was not something that they were able to turn to. They turned away from. Mm. And it was Stu that brought them back uh, to their faith. And, and yeah. How hard was it to make this movie? And first-time director, we've got to say, Rosalind Ross does an incredible job. Wrote this directed it, how did you find her? We had had uh, a couple of people that we had take a crack at a pass of the script. Nothing was, nothing was really kind of registering for us. Mm -hmm. And um, even to the point where Father Ed got so frustrated with the process, he was like, this is not gonna work, we shouldn't do this. And I was already so far down the road and I prayed about it and prayed about it. I said, no, no, I have to do this. This is my calling. There's a very specific reason why I've been called to do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he said, okay, you know, I hope you do the right thing. And and please, you know, I, and I asked for Stu's intercession. Wow. I asked for the Lord's intercession in Mary. And I prayed about it every single day. Mm -hmm. um, and I was able to find through, again, a miracle. Everything happens for a reason, right? So I asked Mel if I could sit down with him and talk to him. I was picking his brain about how he got the passion made and mm -hmm. all the obstacles. Who plays your faced. father in the yes, movie? Yes, all the obstacles that he had to face and you know why he was compelled to finance it himself and mm -hmm. all of those things. And Rosie had written another script for Mel that he and I were going to make it. He was going to direct uh, called Destroyer, which is this amazing giant epic of World War II. Yeah. Uh, she just said, you know, I'd like to take a crack at it. And I said, okay, why not? I mean, I really loved her writing. I was a big fan of what she had done. Um, three months later, she hands me the script hmm. to the movie that I literally wanted to make. Wow. I didn't want to change a thing. And then I, I was talking about, do I direct it? Do I try to talk Mel into directing it? And then I was like, why not Rosie? I mean, hmm. she could put it on the page. She could put it on the screen. Wow, that's a, that's a big leap, though. Yeah. It is, wow. but, you know, again... She does an extraordinary job. This movie is yeah. incredible. She's fantastic. The emotional power of this in your performance, um, how did you prepare for that? This is a, 
I mean, you see this guy, the early part of the life, I could see where you could relate to that. You could find connective points. But as he degenerates, as his body succumbs to this muscular disease, yeah. how did you prepare for that part of it, which is very moving and powerful? Well, again, I don't want to uh, get emotional. It's just such a sensitive subject because, you know, my dad didn't have IBM, but my dad had cancer, my dad had strokes, my dad was mm -hmm. the strongest guy that I'd ever seen, and then next thing you know, my dad was in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. and, you know, my dad couldn't walk, and we had to, you know, take care of him, you know, he was lived in an assisted living home. Mm -hmm. So I understood that, but I also understood my search for my purpose um, in the big picture of what God is expecting of me. and Which is what? To do his work to serve him, to utilize the talents and gifts that he's given me to help others and inspire mm -hmm. others no matter where the situation is, where they come from, what obstacles they face. Mm -hmm. That there is there is a purpose and, and God will put them in the right place at the right time and he'll give them the right words or the right tools to, to accomplish the mission. You know, I, I lost my mom during the making of the movie. Right. And I kind of just... I went to, obviously went to the services and everything, and I was able to, you know, um, digest it a little bit. I kind of kept it bottled inside, mm. and then I was here in this church, very church, shooting the scene where I'm asking God why. Before the crawling, yeah. Before the crawling, at, at the altar. At the altar. Yeah, and uh, I was one take for probably about 15 minutes, and it all just came out. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've never gone to acting school, but I wouldn't do, there isn't anything I wouldn't do to prepare for a role. And I just mm -hmm. feel like because of all my real life experience, it does give me an advantage as an actor mm -hmm. to play the roles that I should be playing. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to go and try to do, you know, uh, Othello, you know, next week. I would be a little out of my wheelhouse. That doesn't mean if I wouldn't spend the years of preparation to go yeah. and try to do that, that would yeah. maybe be my next challenge. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, it's just... Um, this is what I meant to do. You mentioned it a moment ago that this is a big, this is something new for you. Is this a career shift for you where you'll spend your career on this more redemptive fair and these more redemptive personal stories of faith? Um, well, if I continue to act at the, the pace that I'm acting, uh, mm -hmm. I always want to do something completely different. So I want to do mm -hmm. comedy, I want to do drama, I want to do action, I want to do those things. But yeah. in my personal life, and what I utilize for my platform, I'm put to task and challenge to, to utilize my gifts to do great things for other people. And that also doesn't mean that I necessarily need to do it where I'm waving the flag, look at me, because the left hand's not supposed to know what the right hand is doing and alms giving, mm -hmm. right? But I've got to, because it all comes down to the biggest critic, the one person that matters when you are judged for what you've done. Because I could be out here saying all these wonderful things, and if I'm right. behind closed doors doing God knows what, mm -hmm. it's still going to end up very bad for me. So I have, I have had a lot of real life experience, and I've made a lot of mistakes, and I'm continuing to do the work and not look for cheap grace. Yeah. You know, and do the mission. The mission is to plant those seeds, to blossom, and to do God's work. It's an extraordinary movie. I'm so excited. I, you know, I, it's one of those things where I uh, couldn't be more proud of the movie, everybody's contribution to the movie. I've, I've, I've made a lot of movies, and a few times, there's a handful of times where I've made a movie where everybody's there to service the story and the vision, and of course, you know, Stu's work. It's crazy because it took six years to get it there, and then it took, we only had 30 days to make it. 30 days? Yeah, and it's pretty, it's pretty ambitious in its scope and size and what we were trying to accomplish. Yeah. I remember one of the actors um, in the film just saw the movie. He goes, oh, my God, I thought we were making this little independent movie. <laughs> right. And I said, we were. He goes, I know, but it feels like a blockbuster. And I said, well, we, we had high hopes for it. And, you know, I think um, with Stu's journey, the character arc, all the stuff, I mean, how much he changed physically and all those things and how much he grew spiritually... Mm -hmm. Um, and the humor in the movie. Yeah. But it's hard to do these stories, Mark. A an externalized conversion, because it by nature is something that happens inside, that is such a hard nut to crack. I, I cannot wait for people to see it. I cannot wait to go from city to city, state to state, encouraging people not to see it, showing them, you know, having conversations and encouraging people. And if we get one other person, if we plant one more seed in one other person, you know, the next guy to step up and, and you know, even if it takes them 50 years to, to get there, to impact 
somebody else. And, you know, we're, we're, we're doing our job. All right. We'll leave it there. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Father Stu, starring Mark Wahlberg and Mel Gibson, written and directed by Rosalind Ross, opens in theaters on Good Friday, April 15th.